Two screens really are better than one. It's always the way with smartwatches and earbuds, it's really hard to show them off well in a slightly wider talking to camera shot. I like smartwatches. I like them a lot. Now, fitness trackers are great for health monitoring, but I really prefer having more options controlling and interacting with my phone and having that live on my wrist. To that same token, I've really enjoyed Mavoy's line of tick watches. In the smartwatch space, there are a few higher profile options, and on Wear OS, the Fossil Group options likely get a bit more coverage, but almost all of the improvements to UI on Wear OS likely came from a TicWatch first. I've been wearing the TicWatch 3 Pro for a couple recharges now, and it's helped maintain my affinity for the brand. Mobvoi is working at the bleeding edge of smartwatch tech, keeping one of their best differentiating features and prices aren't getting crazy. This is one of the first watches on the market sporting Qualcomm's new processor, boasting faster, and smoother performance. At the time I shot this, we're still waiting on a major software update from Google, promising a number of improvements, but it's refreshing to see that the hardware here is already delivering a noticeable benefit. Last generation Qualcomm's updated processor didn't really run any faster. It was more of a play for better battery life. So it wasn't much of a compromise to see the last generation of TicWatch skip that Qualcomm processor. What drains a watch more is the screen, and Mobvoi's dual display solution was better for battery. You've got a juicy OLED when you want it, but a low power always on screen when you need it. On the Pro 3, the second screen gets a nice shot in the arm. It delivers more information, it now has a subtle backlight glow, and I love the way this works out of the box. When you get a notification, lifting your arm will turn on the OLED. But otherwise, lifting your arm just flips on the backlight for the low power screen. You always have the best feature of a watch. At a glance information for the time, your battery, the date, and your current step count. The display reformats when you start a workout, and this is one of the easiest watches to read when you're out in direct sun. It's like you're marrying the fancy, juicy OLED watch screen with a pebble. Y'all remember the pebble, right? So when Mavoy claims three days of runtime, you really get three days. I've had it for a week and I just started my third recharge. I really don't like it when a watch screen turns off and you can't reference it without waggling your arm to turn it back on. And this is the best battery balance I've found. The low power screen runs so well that you could just disable the smartwatch stuff if you want and use the tick watch as a basic watch and pedometer. And you can run it in that low power mode for a month and a half. I did not test that battery claim. The watch hasn't been out that long, but I feel it's probably accurate. The screen is better, the internals are more powerful, the battery is about 20% bigger, and the overall casing feels just a touch slimmer. It's really impressive. The design is simple, steel and plastic, a minimal bezel. It's straightforward as a timepiece. What you wear on your wrist is always going to be a very personal decision to your own unique and individual style, but I like what Mobvoi is doing on the Tick Watch, and I think it looks clean when I'm wearing it. The new tech for fitness, in addition to regular heart rate tracking, the watch can also test blood oxygen saturation. One of those fancy new features that you'll find on more expensive watches, it's here for or a little less, contributing a bit more information to workouts and general health tracking. And if you follow my channel at all, you know I'm gonna be a big old nerd for audio tech, and the microphones have been improved enough where the watch can be used to test for loud conditions. This is a super handy way to protect your hearing and gives you a more tangible metric for what a dangerous sound level might be. All of the software has gotten a little better. Additional workouts have been added. I personally, I use a stationary bike for most of my workouts, and the last tick watch had a mode for that I was really happy to see but now we get additional action activity hiking and yoga workout modes that you can track from your watch and the layout is just a little cleaner hitting your app list makes better use of the watch face with a straight vertical swipe and navigating in general is a lot smoother I don't think Mavoy has ever gotten the credit they deserve for influencing Wear OS. The original TicWatch offered a custom UI with directional swipes that would later be adopted 
adopted by Google. I hope the next flavor of Wear OS borrows some of these app refinements for all Google Watches. And the extra power is key. I'm really curious to see how Google might clean up Wear OS, bring on more developers to make small apps. A lot of applets just really weren't that useful. I love the functionality of getting notifications and being able to reply on my wrist without having to use my phone. But firing up other apps was usually so choppy that it wasn't better than just pulling out your phone. Now, those interactions are better now, where I might reference a list in Keep or quickly scan through conversations and messages that track my full messaging history, using the watch as a remote viewfinder for my phone's camera. Google still has some ways to polish, like when maps can't find anything around me, that's not great. But this is giving me a little hope we might see some more attention paid to this platform in the near future, like better communication with durable medical equipment like blood sugar monitoring gear. But I do have one small concern for the tick watch. My biggest gripe with Mobvoi's hardware, I wish they'd settle on a single style of charger. I've been through most of their smartwatch options and it feels like no two watches have ever used the same charge cable. If you're not gonna use wireless, I'd be fine with that, but at least settle on a single style of pin charger that will last from watch to watch. And also for health tech, for folks who have been interested in those kinds of features, it lacks an ECG scan, and there isn't an option of this watch yet for an LTE model. But Wi-Fi model to Wi-Fi model, you'll spend about $100 less than an Apple Watch Series 6 and get significantly longer runtime out in the field. That's way more useful for me as a sleep tracker, not needing to charge the watch multiple times per day just to use all of the features on it. It's always nice having more options to play with. Fitness trackers can tackle workouts, but they're not as nice for the communication side of our technology. A little refinement, more powerful internals, and a strong option from Mobvoi gets a lot nicer. And I think this will be the hardware I'll use to test out this update Google is bragging about for Wear OS. I'd hold my breath, but then the tick watch would nag me to breathe. It's so dopey holding the watch. I'm just gonna put it back on my wrist while we wrap this all up. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to my channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I greatly appreciate all of you who go through and actually look at those links in the description below. Maybe check out my merch. I really do appreciate that. There's a support page over on somegadgetguy.com for a current list of all of my affiliates and partnerships. Or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen. That's from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. And those are basically the coolest people on the web. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.